Everyone knows that air rises in water in the form of bubbles. Lives have been saved in underwater emergencies by trapping air and using it. Once for a pilot whose plane had sunk in the ocean. A sealed cabin and a source of oxygen kept him alive till I could free him. I saved my own life with an air trap too. I had been caught by a violent underwater turbulence. I finally broke free, I was exhausted and dazed and a long way from the surface. I trapped air from my diving lung in a square of canvas that I'd used for rock samples. It worked as an underwater balloon, bringing me to the surface and to safety. I was in New York delivering a lecture on air traps to a convention of divers. When I returned to my hotel room, I was sure that I was through with that subject. I was wrong. And so, here in the river, within shouting distance of millions of people, a ship has gone to the bottom and many of her crew have drowned. You are now looking at the SS Bahia, one of the two vessels that collided and the only one of the two to survive. The freighter Jupiter went to the bottom, and as you have heard, it is feared that an undetermined number of seamen were trapped in the vessel when she sank. An exact estimate of the death toll is not available at this time. No announcement has been made as to the number of people who were hurt. The mayor has commended the various rescue units for their heroic and remarkable work in the face Hello? of almost insurmountable Speaking. obstacles. No information is yeah, I'm watching right now. the cargoes, the damage to the bayou, oh. or the value of the lost vessel, the Jupiter. Apparently, hey, there is a I'll be there as fast as I can. Which of the vessels was at fault? Yeah, I know where it is. I'll see you in 15 minutes. I can't understand how the whole thing happened. Broad daylight. Two perfectly competent sea captains. And one of the newest ships we had. There was absolutely no excuse for the whole thing. But, uh... What makes you think that there's somebody still alive down there? I read the article you wrote about underwater air traps. Oh, I see. Five men are still unaccounted for. I, uh, I hate to ask you to risk your life on something that seems hopeless. Oh, there's no way of knowing it's hopeless until you try. Does that mean you're willing to try? Have you got a diagram of the ship's interior? Why, of course. She went down nose first in about 50 feet of water. She's going to shift for the tide, you know. And when that happens, it'll probably wipe out whatever air traps there might be now. Flood tides at 5.05, that gives you about four hours. Oh, that's not much time. We'll have to pick up my equipment, too. We'll do it on the way. Sir. Okay. Well, we'll see if that hunch of yours is right. Well, don't take any chances. Do the best you can, that's all. I will. Can I get that crowbar? Hold me up. Okay. See you guys. The water 
temperature was remarkably clear, and I saw the Jupiter immediately. But the current was strong, and I judged that the ship had not yet settled completely. A sudden shift might kill me and any of the crew who might still be trapped alive. I tied the lifeline to the deck rail. I couldn't open the first hatch. I began tapping with my crowbar. This would be a signal to anyone who might be alive, and the sound would also tell me if the air was trapped anywhere. But there was no response to my signals, and all the compartments seemed flooded. response to my signals, but deep in the heart of a vessel, water was being held back by an air trap, and three lives were flickering out in the damp darkness. I know you're scared. So am I. Easy for me. Scared. He's too dumb to know he's gonna die. Tiger's a smart pup. He knows what's happening to us. Easy, boy. He's so smart, let's see him find a way to get out of this trap. Oh, good. As soon as the air's gone. Yeah. We're using it up fast, too, ain't we? What are we going to do about it? There's nothing we can do, Johnny. I know something we can do. We can drown that dog. Man, you're mine! He's using up the air. That's my air. He's using up the air. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Was it imagination or wishful thinking? Did I really hear an answer to my signal? Someone was alive and trapped in this underwater tomb. I moved toward the sound. We began to communicate in Morse code. I learned that two men had been able to stay alive in an air trap in the galley, but that they were beginning to suffocate for lack of fresh air. I was running out of air myself and I needed more equipment. I told them not to give up, that I'd be right back for them. I didn't tell them that the tide would soon change, and that if it shifted the Jupiter's hull, their trapped air could escape, and they'd be drowned in an instant.
tanks of mine full? Yes, they are. All right, get them. And get me two extra tanks. Right. Give me a cutting torch. Then you phone somebody. Alive? Send those tanks down the lifeline. Okay? Yeah. There's two of them down there. They're in the galley. The door jammed in the collision, and it's formed an air pocket, and it's kept them alive. Your hunch was right. The tide will shift in less than an hour. Can you get them out by then? I gotta get them out before that. Come on, me up. Okay. What's the key for them? Take it easy, Johnny. It's gonna take time. I'll be drowned before he gets back. Get rid of that brute! You starting that again? I'm telling you! The more you talk, the more I you suck. When I returned to the Jupiter, I knew it must have shifted somewhat because the hatch was closed again. I wondered if the men were still alive. to my signal, I knew that they had survived. But every second was even more precious now. I found a point below the water level in the galley. If I cut in too high, the trapped air would escape. began to burn through the steel bulkhead, I could still hear occasional weak taps. The tapping had stopped now. A cutting torch had never seemed so slow. sharply, but I held on and kept cutting.
last, I punched through an opening. I turned off the hydrogen line, which put out the flame of the torch. I let the oxygen and compressed air continue to flow, because I had another use for the torch now. Burst your lungs. You understand? I'll be back for you as soon as I start him up alive. Don't worry. I won't go away.
the second man on his way up, I had completed my original mission. But I still had one more life to save. I had improvised a small air trap with one of the galley pots, filling it with air from the torch so the pup could keep breathing. I had a job holding both the lion and the struggling dog under the pot. You sure will brought us luck, Tiger. <laughs> oh, boy, it's good to be up here now, eh, boy? <laughs> Ain't it, boy? <laughs> oh, brother. Tiger, my lucky buck. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. I know the sport well and don't take any chances. Be with you next week for another exciting sea hunt.